What is up, everyone? Welcome back to part two of Manual Delay Compensation. you how we were going to double check our manual delay compensation? Oh yeah. Well, what seems to be the best way would be to use a phase trace in an FFT like Smart in order to align your inputs. Let me show you on the whiteboard of how I have my inputs set up for comparison before we dive right in. So the idea is we take our reference channel, which is flat, we add in our longest path delay onto the reference channel, which is 375 samples. We have to make sure all the processing on this channel and any bus that it passes through, the processing is all flat but still in circuit in order to get a clean face trace. We pan our reference channel to the right because my smart is dedicated on input 2, which is from the right side of the stereo matrix that normally feeds my PA. So we insert the reference channel on my left right mix, pan it to the right, and send it discreetly to input two on my smart. Why are you adding channel delay to your reference channel? I'm adding delay to my reference channel in order to emulate the endpoint for our longest path before it hits my main mix. That way, every input channel that I am aligning in my mix has the same reference point. Therefore, they will all be aligned to the same point in time. That being said, every input channel that I'm aligning in my mix is panned to the left in order to hit input one in my smart for comparison to input two. And remember, we have to keep all of these processing points in line, but bypassed in order to get a clean phase trace. Because if we don't bypass EQ and compression and other forms of processing, we won't be able to achieve a flat phase trace when comparing both the inputs in our smart. But we must keep the processing in line or in circuit because we want to align that input channel with the latency being induced. So before we start deconstructing our show, let's go ahead and save both our console and our super rack files as different versions. That way we aren't editing our actual show files. Now that we are in safe and non-destructive files, let's go ahead and bypass all of the processing on our input channel. Bypass, bypass, turn off, and leave the waves insert in. We also have to make sure whatever the input channel is being sent to, that the processing on that bus is also bypassed. So we are on the tracks. So let's go ahead and go to the group, the tracks, processing, bypass. Now let's flip over to waves and make sure we do the same thing. We want to bypass our plugins, but leave them in circuit. We're also going to have to bypass any bus processing, including our left right mix. So let's go ahead and do the same thing, bypass all the plugins, but leave them in circuit. So now that the processing on our input channel is bypassed, but still in circuit, and both our input channel and our reference channel are panned to the retrospective sides, input channels going to the left side, which will hit our input one on smart, and our reference channel hitting input two on our smart panned to the right. We're now ready to assign pink noise to both of these channels and compare them in smart. So let's go ahead and turn on our signal generators. Go to our reference channel. We'll add our longest path delay. Remember, we have to do that, which is 375. Let's see what's going on in smart. Is it supposed to look that way? Uh, not quite. It should be a straight line for a coherence. So let's jump over to our spreadsheet and calculate the latency we need to add to our input channel in order to align this channel. So let's look what we have going on here. Our longest path, which is in our longest path field, 
which is also added to our reference, is at 375 samples. Our wave network buffer is set to 1.7 milliseconds, which is 170 samples measured out through this platform. So let's go ahead and add in our server network buffer latency right here because it's taking one trip in and out of waves. And on our insert A, we have a Dynate, which takes four samples. Let's go ahead and switch over to waves to see how much latency we're adding with just the plugin processing. Looks like we have zero latency, 128, and zero, which adds up to be a total latency value of 128 samples. So now we want to switch back over to our spreadsheet and add in 128 samples at our insert B point or insert two. And now our input channel hits a group which also has a Dynate across it, which adds another four samples of delay. This gives us a total compensation needed of 69 samples. Now that we know we need 69 samples of delay on our input channel, and let's go ahead and enter in 69 samples while we watch Smart and see what happens to the phase trace. And would you look at that, perfectly aligned. Sweet. Now all you have to do is do all the other channels. I know it sounds like a painful process. That's definitely why you need to take time to do this and to make sure it's coming out correctly by double checking your work through an FFT like Smart. Now that Pink Noise has destroyed every channel in your show and all of your processing is bypassed across all of your inputs, are you ready for a show? Probably not. This next part is how I deal with importing my delay settings back into my original show file. If you look, I have two scenes here set up for manual delay compensation on and off. And if you look in here, recall filter, the only thing it's recalling is the delay settings on all the input channels. Store, yes. And then let's go ahead and lock that. Once you're back into your original show file, you can go ahead and import your manual delay compensation scene from the previous show file where you aligned all your channels into your current show. And then you could fire that scene in order to load all of those delays. Now, since this is a lot of number crunching, screen watching, spreadsheets, and math, after I fire the scene to load the input delays, I like to double check my work through the spreadsheet just to make sure. And boom, there you have it. Manual delay compensation in all of its glory. And if you do go about importing your delay settings back into your original show file, do yourself a favor. Save one with the manual delay compensation on and off. That way you can compare the differences in your mix and decide if this is worth all the trouble. Now that we're ready for a show, let's do some A-Bing, shall we? I set up a scene that has all the additional manual delay compensation zeroed out. This will still include old school compensation methods for dealing with parallel paths and groups, the DLive's automatic delay compensation, and lastly, my latency groups in my super rack session. That way we can compare our usual methods of compensation to our manual delay compensation, which aligns every input to leave the console at the exact same time. So let's hit it, shall we? interesting, right? I think what makes this subject a little controversial is that people assume that this is the correct way or the only way to have a great sounding show. It's definitely not what I'm saying and not what I believe to be true. I do truly believe that if it sounds good, then it is good. Simple as that. But I've also come to believe that maybe what we do as engineers are many small improvements that make something great, not just one plugin or theory to rule them all. Well... That's it for this episode of A Sum of Two Buses. I want to thank all of you that have been so supportive of this little project of mine. I had no idea what I was getting into when I started all this, and I certainly didn't know if anyone would care. So it means a lot to me that you shared some of your time during this difficult moment in the touring industry. So, if you dug this, please like, 
please share, and please subscribe. Until next time, take care and be safe. Bye.